Nice. Very nice. Thanks, Thanks Asap. Thank that you. was great. That song. What was that? That's yeah. called Tumbling Tumbleweeds. Oh, oh good. I love that. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> well, we got a great show song. today. Um, Scott's got some uh, art, and he's going to show some Flagship Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, Noel's got events as usual, yep. as always. And um, <laughs> I've got City Council as usual, and it's Community Forum, and they talk about Special District, Hillview Way and the new Fort Missoula Regional Trails Project. So Perfect. we've got a great show, so let's start off. Scott, what do we got? Well, you know, um, we got some weather, and it was nice this morning. It was really it, nice yeah, this morning. I woke up, I walked bad. downtown. It was wet on the ground, but, you know, it was from last night. You know, you mm -hmm. walk through, and it's like, oh, this is not too bad at all. But, you know, if you take a look at outside right now, <laughs> you can see our outdoor eye cam. Cool. There's some people walking. Cool. Yep. It's starting to get lighter later in the morning. So yeah. that's kind of well, it's kind of a bummer, but it's also like it, it's a blessing because um, you get a chance to actually see the sunrise. Yeah. If we really if pretty. we want to move the camera over to there, but the yeah. we have a we whole don't. building in the way, so we're yeah. located at the corner of <laughs> Spruce and Higgins. But if we look at our um, seven-day forecast, it is currently 43 degrees outside. Um, today, there's a 30% chance of shower, followed by tonight is 40% chance of shower. High into 54, low into 38. You might want to stay inside, but you can take a risk to go outside. Saturday is supposed to be mostly sunny. Saturday night, it's likely to rain. Sunday, so through the weekend, it's going to rain. And then Monday night, it's going to be mostly cloudy. But you should expect rain for the next seven days. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's fall. Pretty yeah, soon that'll freeze and turn into snow. So I'm glad that it's rain it's right now and not snow. It's already snow up in high elevation. Yeah, so. over 5,000 feet. There was actually a winter weather advisory the other day for wow. elevations 5,000 feet and higher. Yeah. What about um, Great Falls? How is Great Falls doing? I think it's fine. Okay. I think windy, dry. Yeah. Haven't is heard it going to snow soon? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, they got snow like a while back. Remember when it like was June? first starting to snow? No, like a month ago. Oh, Remember okay. when it was like first starting to snow, like yeah, those yeah. and stuff? Yeah. So they got a little snow then, but yeah, I haven't really talked to my mom though. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> was it generally colder in Great Falls? Yeah, in yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, totally. And it's so windy, and so like the oh, yeah. wind chill, like it'll be six degrees there, and then with the wind chill, it'll make it like negative something. Yeah. It's freezing. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could find out mm -hmm. more information about what we do here at Wake Up Missoula on our webpage. This is our Facebook page. You can follow <laughs> us on Twitter. Also, we have our new Wix page, which is basically you can look at us up by going to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So there's a you have to type in Wake Up yeah, Missoula. Yeah, you got to type in the but whole thing. But you won't forget the name of our show. No. But yeah, it's a nice little thing. I, po I posted the recent episode up there. You can mm -hmm. see um, last week's episode. Or Monday's episode. And you can see um, I separated uh, the interview from Wednesday's show. Perfect. From and we have some Bob Clark interview right there, so you can see some of our old shows along with some of the interviews that we've done. And there's a little thing, a little gallery thing about us, a little thing about ASAP. I put it like ASAP. And then there's also a link on his name where you can click on it, and it goes to his um, documentary that was made Very about cool. him. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. So I had about an hour of free time the other night. I just decided to do yeah, it. Yeah, so. it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ever have any like questions or comments or things you want to be in our show, don't hesitate to write on our Facebook page and mm -hmm. let us know. Yeah. And if you have any suggestions for what we should put on our, our web page, I'll, I'll definitely do it. i um, probably put a flagship Friday video of the week on there, and also the arts clip. Yeah. Cool. Totally. Yep. So right now I want to talk a little bit about the the clay studio. Um, Chris Duffala and Elena Lawrence is at the clay studio. They're the artist of the month, and it's going to end October thirty first. So if you want to go there and check out all their artwork, you have until the thirty first of this month to go check it out. Nice. So and here's a little taste of what our very own Rick Phillips produced using MCAT's equipment and all sorts of stuff. So. Here
Are you gonna be able to vote on election day? I know I'm not, but that's why we have absentee voting. There are a couple of different ways to register absentee. The first is to pick up an application, or you can download one online. If you download an application, be sure to sign it and then email or fax the application back to the elections office. After the close of registration, be sure to visit us at the Missoula County Fairgrounds to receive your absentee ballot. You can now track your absentee ballot online. Check out MissoulaVotes.com after you send in your absentee ballot to track it. If you're a college student or you're going to be out of town during the election, put an alternative address on your absentee registration and we'll send you your ballot to that address. Don't let life get in the way of voting. Vote absentee today. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, yeah. Jessica. Cool. So if you guys are interested in absentee ballot, because I know Noah no, was just a little bit talking about it. Just, I was, yes. yeah. Yeah, and I'll also show another PSA about late registration voting. So people cool. who just want to vote the day of, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is nice. We have yeah. same day registration voting. It is nice. Mm -hmm. That's important. It's good for, for, for procrastinators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I still have my absentee ballot. I still need to send it in. but I need to get one mm -hmm. and send it in. Yeah. It'll I know they're going to be happen. open at the fair. They're going to be open all over the place. You can yeah. just generally go to the courthouse, and there's an elections cool. area where um, Shira Scott and the gang are all over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We should get them down. One we of them totally down here. We totally should get them down. Maybe I'll, Shira again. Yeah, I'll, um, That'd be cool. I'll email them, and then we'll yeah. get them all down to come talk about elections. But yeah, I want to stop talking, and I want to talk straight about Flagship Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say it like that because it's ghostly. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I gotta mention this, my sister Deidre's birthday today, and she's turning, well, it's her fourth anniversary of her 28th birthday. Yeah, totally. Yeah, cool. Nice. Happy 28th birthday times four. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> times four, wow. It's ASAP's <laughs> birthday on Sunday. Yes, yeah. it is. ASAP. Um, do you mind telling us how old you're gonna be? 56. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm proud you of look that. great for 56. You do. You right. look really great right. for 56. Yeah. I hope I can keep it up. I don't have much control over the aging process. <laughs> <laughs> How about a little birthday music, Asa? Sure, I'll do that for your sister, okay? All right. And you. And you, Asa. Okay. They do you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear <laughs> Scott sister. Yeah, very nice. This is, really this is why we have a television show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you announce your birthday on TV. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, I'm going to show, show this. It, this is um, Nathan Rock Hammer Returns. It's a Ooh. gritty cop drama um, at Hellgate High School, and it, and it's about six minutes long. So I'll stop talking and show it. So check it out. Oh, boom. <laughs> You were supposed to be in my office five minutes ago. Mm. Mm. Chief. Mm. 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 Chief. Mm. is I want you to solve this case of the purse snatcher. This may require you to go undercover, and this is gonna be really expensive to recover over $3.26 out of that purse. You think you can do this? <laughs> Hey guys. So, can you give me some of the details of the robbery? Um, he was hiding behind a pillar, and then he jumped out, took my bag, and then ran. 
Tough. Well, in the reports, it says the man was blonde. Is that true? Ish. Okay. And what kind of purse was it? It was a little purse. Can you describe me the purse? It was little. Was it black? Yeah, sort of. Did it have silver chaining on it? Yeah, sort of. Everything lines up. Oh, oh God, oh, oh, oh. Ah. I got some new information for you. What is it, Chief? It turns out that the thief called in the report, so that you, we could do the dirty work for her. Oh, snap. Snappleberry. Sniggity snap. Snapocalypse. Crack snapple pop. Not snaptastic. Snap. Who <laughs> get your purse back? Don't worry. Make sure you get it right this time. <laughs> Just keep crying. Only the beginning. And that's that? Um, that was hilarious. <laughs> That was so funny. God, those kids are so funny. Good actors. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. they're all down and moving things forward. That's why it was so long. It was just like all the kids knew what they wanted to do, and let's do it, do, do, gag, 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 random, random stuff, random stuff, gag, all that stuff. How long did it take you to make that? Oh, it just took um, the one day of shooting. One day, like, after like, school, right? Yeah, after school program. So, like, I do the after three school hours, program. Three hours, four hours? No, um, like, two. Two hours. Two. God, that was so funny. That's good. That's How long great. does it take to edit? Not too long. I, I keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I try to shoot in order, all the scenes in order, and then it's I just kind of smart. piece it together. There's yeah. still a lot of scenes I left out of there. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Well, it was great. That was super funny. <laughs> Those kids are awesome. <laughs> so, what's the highlights of the city council yeah, stuff? Community so forum, yeah. Are you going to start with Hillview Way, then? I'm going to start okay. with Hillview Way. Um, cool. That was how it went down in the meeting, so I'll just go in order. Yeah. But, uh... Sounds good. All right, so, yeah. Hillview Way. So, this is community forum. Um, Mike Haynes, he's from the city. He's going to just do a little presentation on it, and uh, I'll let you watch. So there will be time even after if... Nope, that's the wrong clip. I will let you watch. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mike Haynes, I am the Development Services Director for the City of Missoula. I am not a native Missoulian, um, as you probably uh, could gather, but uh, I am nevertheless invested in the city. So um, thanks for the invitation today to talk about uh, Hillview Way. And um, I've got a, a presentation here with hopefully some good <laughs> graphics which will help me uh, describe the proposed project improvements, uh, talk a little bit about the funding, and um, talk about what's different this time because uh, many of you will know that uh, the city took a run at this in 2007. Uh, and there's quite a bit different, especially about the funding this time around. And then wrap up with uh, process, which, uh, you know, we're, we're at a key uh, point right now. All right, so that's Mike Haynes telling us a little bit about what this presentation is going to be all about. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, so it, he, there's talking about what's going to be different mm -hmm. um, from, you know, 2007, because they tried to do this in 2007. Okay. They're going to talk about what the improvements are and they're gonna talk about the process. So the first thing that they, he, Mike starts to talk about is the, uh, the improvements. So this is a little look at the cross section or the road itself. So let's just look, take a look. This is the cross section. Uh, looking at section one, so this is at the top of the hill um, and section two is um, towards the middle. And the only difference is the width of the um, drive lanes. So in section one, you've got 10, and a half foot wide uh, drive lanes in section two, 10 foot wide, and that's because um, we're giving a little bit of extra maneuvering room in, on the um, uh, more curved portion of the road than when you get to the straightaway. And as uh, Doug mentioned, there's a proposal for a, a sidewalk on one side of the road, so this cross section looks up the hill, so looking south and um, mostly because of the uh, limited right-of-way width we're working within the existing right-of-way uh, we're really limited to this cross-section so a lot of people have asked about the bike lanes you probably know Hillview Way is pretty steep uh, but there are people who bike up and down there and what the bike lanes do it's really more of a striping issue um, even if we did not have the bike lanes, given that you've got the curb and gutter on either side and um, you know some shy distance fr from there, the cross section would look pretty much the same. But in this, uh, we're able to, by using paint, both create um, bike lanes on both sides of the road and have reasonably narrow travel lanes that tend to um, limit the uh, speed of uh, vehicles uh, driving up and down Hillview. And I should uh, mention... Okay. So here's a look at... Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. Here is a look at... Oh, sorry. What are we doing here? But anyway, so uh, basically, I'm just going to show you the total... A look at the total map. That's what we just... I have about. a comment to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if, if, if you've driven up Hillview Way, there's a lot of real estate in terms of driving space. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they can totally sacrifice as much space as they need because... There's more than enough room to p have a sidewalk and plenty of um, bike installations all over the place because Hillview Way Road is pretty wide on its own. <coughs> cool. That's yeah. true. That's good. Yeah, I think they should. I think the it's interesting because once you put bike lanes on a road and you narrow the road, it forces traffic to go slower. Yeah. So it's safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And interesting. Tell us about this picture. So this is an aerial view of Hillview Way. Um, I'll just let Mike Haynes talk about it. Of course, the, the, this project is a, is a complete reconstruction of the roadway. Uh, for those of you who know Hillview, and I live just off of there myself, it's, um, the roadway's in bad condition, very poor uh, drainage, a lot of erosion, and the actual pavement width tends to um, 
uh, vary depending on the condition of the roadway and how much it's uh, sloughed off and so forth. And obviously this will be a reconstruction, curb and gutter, um, sort out the drainage problems, uh, install the, um, include the bike lanes and install the, uh, the sidewalk. Okay. All right, so that's a little view, aerial view of what's gonna, that whole section of road mm -hmm. that's gonna be worked on. Now, uh, the next thing he talks about is costs. So let's, it's gonna cost $3.8 million, um, but uh, he shows you where the costs are coming from in percentage wise. So let's listen to Mike Haynes. So the total cost of the project is estimated to be $3.8 million, and the funding is proposed to come about a third from um, citywide impact fees, as you can see there, uh, primarily transportation impact fees, but uh, some parks impact fees, which would pay for the uh, installation of the undercrossing that I mentioned. And then two thirds would be paid for by both uh, existing um, development in the district as well as future development, and I'll explain uh, that right here. Okay. So that's that's the cost. That's what it looks like. So impact cool. fees, special improvement district, um, and here is the uh, expensive. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. But here, here are the which which properties are in the special improvement district. Okay. This gives you a little aerial view. Right here. So. Uh, Properties included in the SID are within the uh, boundary that you can see they're identified in yellow. Um, and the properties which are in the SID are essentially those will, that will benefit from the uh, Hillview Way improvements. So um, the, the, the homes uh, generally, um, will, the folks living in those homes will access to and from uh, using Hillview Way. There, there's a couple of other ways out okay. of the neighborhood. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and show you guys what's different between 2007 and 2014. If I can pull up the right one here. So just a um, review, we're, we're talking about the Hillview Way construction and right now he's talking about the logistics from the meeting? Um, he's talking about the cost, he's talking about the logistics, he's cost, talking about everything really. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is, yeah. Just for people who, do, who are just tuning in, knowing that we're yeah. talking about Hillview Way, and it's they're getting in depth in terms of what they're talking about. Yeah, it's getting in depth. Uh, I mean, it's going to cost a lot of money for the city, um, but it's going to save money for the people living there. So really, these people are getting a smoking deal, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot different from what they were going to do in two thousand seven because they tried to fix it in 2007. So let's just show you the differences here. So I mentioned the 2007, the big difference, uh, uh, well, we've scaled down the project somewhat. Uh, we're working within the existing right of way. Uh, that keeps costs down. Added is the pedestrian wildlife undercrossing. Um, we're splitting the cost between uh, the city and SID owners in that one third, two thirds approximately uh, breakdown. And most importantly of all, the, um, in 2007 there was quite a complex um, assessment method where uh, uh, folks paid based on the size of their property and the value of their property. So <clears throat> someone with a 2,000 square foot single family home on a quarter acre paid a significantly less than a 2,000 square foot home on two acres, for example. But the reality is one single family home, uh, on average, generates the same number of trips. So uh, we believe that the current method of assessments is much uh, fairer. Okay. Cool. So that, that makes sense. So um, what, one of the ways that they're uh, assessing the cost is by trips. How many? So if a, fam a family... A big size family will play a higher SID than a smaller size, like person yeah. living in an apartment or something like totally. that. So, <clears throat> cool. We'll jump ahead a little bit, and basically, uh, John Wilkins. I'm going to jump ahead. John Wilkins asks about the design process because he wants to be a part of it. So let's listen to John Wilkins. The SID pass to uh, talk about design. Of will there be public? 
input on the design? Yeah, there will be. So um, the you know the engineering is probably at about 50 percent right now. There, there, uh, you know, we'll certainly be open to uh, suggestions on the design. Uh, there are some constraints. Most, most there are two major constraints, and that's the uh, cost of the project, 3.8 million, which we've already set the maximum limit on, and of course the right of way width is limited. Um, but we're certainly um, open to uh, discussion about the details of the of the design. Yes, and we'll be, uh, we'll be. Okay. We'll, we'll so yeah. So um, I'm going to jump ahead to the next topic which is uh, the Fort Missoula Recreational Area mm -hmm. and uh, the trails. For, so it's, if you the see Fort those Missoula signs, Regional Park? Regional Park, yes, yeah, Regional Park. And um, they basically want to make it into a regional destination with multi-use fields and uh, a big softball complex cool. and a bunch of trails, and they want to connect it to the Lolo to Missoula Trail to be a part of that as well. Um, so it's a big deal, and if you if you're driving around town, you might see uh, signs that say, say yes to parks and trails. That's what this is about, because mm -hmm. they're voting uh, on... Huge project. Huge project. Uh, $38 million? $38 million, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but they're doing a lot. Oh, yeah. They're doing a lot. <clears throat> so uh, let's just get into it, and uh, we'll hear from uh, the presenter here, and he will tell you what we're looking at here. So let's take a look. John O'Connor. All right, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is John O'Connor. Uh, I am an alternate in the Farview's Patty Canyon uh, neighborhood leadership. So I've been here before sitting in those seats with you guys, and I recognize a lot of faces from presentations we've been doing over the last several months. I just want to give you a quick overview of the Parks and Trails bond initiative that is on the ballot for this November 4th election. I'm going to share information regarding the components of the bond and what we believe is uh, an effort to fund important investments in our shared community values of quality of life, health and wellness, economic opportunity and more, and then I'm going to answer any questions that you might have. So this bond has foundations in our community that stretch back almost two decades. This is not a fly-by-night new project. And we're hoping that uh, the community will get a lot of education about the bond and realize that this has been an effort that's ongoing for some time. In 2010, Missoula County did a survey of residents asking residents what they wanted from their county parks and trails program. And overwhelmingly out in the rural areas, folks who live out there said they wanted more access to public lands, they wanted improved trails. They also said they wanted water access, and although they value parks and playing fields, in those areas what they're really looking for is ways to move off of streets and ways to get into public land. In the urban areas of the county, so in Missoula primarily, parks and playgrounds, trails access, and additional facilities ranked highest. And the survey results interestingly showed that of the top 10 parks that folks who live in Missoula County who don't live within Missoula city limits visit, eight of those parks are actually within city of Missoula limits. And those are places that we all recognize as iconic landmarks in Missoula. We're talking about Bonner Park and McCormick, Karras, Playfair, and the currently existing Fort Missoula Park. In 2013, a group of us got together who really wanted to make this project move forward. Some of us have been working in various aspects of the project since 2000. And we did our own survey, and that was sponsored by a group called Friends of Fort Missoula Regional Park. We wanted to verify that the information in the 2010 survey was still valid, and we found that it was uh, valid indeed. The city of Missoula, earlier this year, passed what they call the Parks Asset Management Plan, the PAM. And that is a roadmap for our city to address the aging infrastructure within the parks department. It really ranks everything from trucks to picnic tables and playgrounds and structures by condition, by age, by use. And that gives us a roadmap to look at. That's another foundation for the bond. The Missoula County 
Parks and Trails Advisory Board has been looking for years now at ways that they can better manage the 45 or so acres of both paved and unpaved trails that they have and how they can expand that system. And then we know that since about 1995, there has been strong citizen effort to get Fort Missoula Park developed into Fort Missoula Regional Park. All right. So it started. Basically, uh, that gives you a. It's a very obviously very comprehensive. Right. Um, yeah. And what you should take away from what he's talking about is that it's not just the Fort Missoula Regional Park. It's it's a total revision of the parks plan and the way mm -hmm. we look at parks the way our it's basically a reassessment of the parks missoula county and missoula, missoula city county parks infrastructure yeah so it's not just for missoula it's regional just, park it's it's also like 13 playgrounds that they plan yeah. on they plan on building an additional playground cool um the trails it's going to connect to yeah it's it's a huge chunk it's it's a huge, it's, 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 it's a lot overhaul. to take in and that's like one of the controversies that i hear especially from my mom who's like <laughs> no 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 it's just like it's a lot to take in there's a lot of information there's a lot of stuff this money's going to it's been spread throughout the whole entire parks department and yeah i i can see like it's hard to eat a steak in one bite yeah a huge portion the majority of the money is going to Fort Missoula Regional Park, or if potentially going to Fort Missoula Regional Park. Um, so I'm going to focus on that um, here. And let's see here. There we go. I'm going to focus on uh, Fort Missoula Regional Park because it's where a huge chunk, the majority of the money is going to. So let's, let's listen to uh, the presenter here and see what he has to say. Fort Missoula Regional Park, um, as we've said to a lot of the neighborhood councils that we've talked to and folks there, we know that Fort Missoula is an integral part of the history of our community. Uh, there's a lot of our community's culture and heritage out there, and so we really wanted to make sure that the design of that facility honors that. And the facility is going to be designed after the CCC era. The Civilian Conservation Corps, the largest headquarters for the CCC west of the Mississippi was in Missoula. And there were a lot of really, really cool things that happened out of Missoula, Montana. The CCC held their um, alumni event here two years ago. And as you might imagine, um, some of those folks are pretty old. Uh, one person was in their 90s. And they had five people attend who were over 85. Uh, and they just had wonderful stories about what happened out of Missoula, Montana. And we really wanted to honor that legacy. This is an overview of what Fort Missoula Regional Park will look like. You'll see that uh, it is a large part of the park dedicated to sporting complex. But you'll also see a lot of trails. And you'll see the pavilion there. Um, the dog, there's a dog park with a water feature. And uh, there are also picnic shelters available. I have all this information that I can email to you or I can get you links as well if you want to spend more time on that. Here's a, just an aerial shot. And, and the red line there is the Tiger Grant Trail that's going to come from Lolo to Missoula and with a connector, the little dotted line going back into the park. This is the other thing that I, I want to make sure everybody understands. Fort Missoula Regional Park will be both a county and city park. 82 acres is owned by the city, and 63 acres is owned by the county. The park plan went through extensive public process. The conceptual design was developed in 2002, and there was mitigation that had to be done out there for uh, historical purposes and also it used to be a tank route for on Guardsman's Lane because the National Guard was out there. That had to be changed. But we also held lots of public hearings and uh, took a lot of public input. The city passed the master park plan for the city parcel in 2008, and the county passed the county master plan in 2012. These are some depictions of what the materials will look like that are going to be used in the park. And you'll see the bottom left is the picture of the pavilion. It will be open with a lot of timber and big stone. There'll be a fireplace at one end. Okay, so those are some of the features. There's going to be an Iron cool. Mike statue and a huge pavilion. 
I like the little dog park with the water feature. That's that'll be yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really we don't have a, a park where dogs can just go to. I mean, of course, you they know, do. they can always go to the river. The Bart Park. The Bart Park. Has we a, have a dog uh, park. The university. No, we have a dog park, but w one with a lake that the dogs can swim in. But they of course, have the rivers right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, mm -mm. heated no. debate. Heated, heated debate. debate. Same thing. Yeah. Um, no. Um, so that's the, <clears throat> so yeah. So that's a look at the regional park. Um, one of the major things that they talk about here is the economic boost factor. So let's listen to the presenter and see what he has to say about the economic boost that this park will bring to Perfect. Missoula. Yeah, I can imagine it'd be a pretty, pretty big boost. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So let's take a listen. An economic boost is something that we not only think is a possibility, but we know it's a reality. Youth sports in the United States is currently a $7 billion a year industry and growing. And um, families often have debates over the dinner table about the value of youth sports and how it's changed from when we grew up. But the fact of the matter is we have a double whammy in Montana. We have a population that is geographically at large distances apart. And we have um, youth who are joining these sports and have to travel, and they travel a lot. We gathered a lot of data on this. The average soccer family spends, excuse me, the average soccer team spends over $10,000 a weekend when they travel. There are a lot of fees that are generated, and you know, we just can't host tournaments in Missoula right now. When we did this presentation to the TBID, they pointed out that 3.3 million people visited Missoula last year, but only 1.1 million spent the night. And not many of those visitors were visitors who were sports-centered. They get contacted a lot by organizations that want to host events here. This, the most recent one was the uh, senior softball championships for the United States wanted to come here. We just don't have the facilities that meet those needs. So w we had to pass. My own sport is Ultimate Frisbee, and uh, our governing body wanted to hold a regional event here that would have brought about 2,500 participants, and we just couldn't do it. We had to pass on that as well. We know that Kalispell, Montana holds a tournament called Three Blind Refs. Last year, they had 139 teams. The net net economic impact of that one weekend of the community was $1.5 million. Our own very conservative numbers, we have a performer that's supposed to be released this week, and we, those numbers are gonna come in somewhere between two and a half and three million dollars that we believe will be a direct economic impact from having the new Fort Missoula Regional Park Complex. Okay. Well, so yeah. maybe it sounds like we should do this. And another yeah. one of the most frequent, frequently asked questions is that, um, how much is this gonna cost us? And apparently it was a cup of coffee a month. It would be the tax. Yeah, and well, how long would three, this last? Three dollars. Three about three forty. About three dollars for the average homeowner. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not bad. And mm -hmm. per month, and yeah. um, it would only last for how many years? Like twenty. Twenty years. For twenty years. Yeah, it has a yeah. sunset. Yeah, that'd be cool if we got that. And like as that little slide said, uh, it would create new jobs. And, would, yeah. so that's and then it would eventually pay for itself and yeah. actually start getting money from what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, I'm going to end there because I think that's a pretty strong quote yeah. to end on. Mm -hmm. so, I think so, too. Um, it's up to you guys. What do you think? Should, yeah. we, uh, should we invest in parks and trails or shouldn't we? Do you think it's too much of a steak to eat all in one bite? Or do you think uh, we can nice. handle it? <clears throat> Cup of coffee a month. Or do you have a third solution? Tell yeah. us all on our Facebook page, Twitter feed, all that kind of stuff. But to find more information about the city of Missoula and all the city of Missoula stuff, you can go log on to www.ci.missoula.mt.us or you can use a search engine to go to Missoula. And here is a nice little look yep. for Missoula, Montana, city of Missoula webpage. And you just go to your government and down to agendas and webcasts, minutes. And you can do a presentation just like we did today. Yeah. And you can watch anything from city council to public safety and health. It's up to you. Yep, and the it's up game. and it shows upcoming upcoming agenda items and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So that's what I've got. Okay. Great. So when we come back, um, we're going to talk about um, yeah, weekend registration. Events. Yep. When we come back after this PCA, PSA, we're talking about weekend events. Yeah. Hi, 
I'm Jessica. Did you know that you can vote before Election Day in Montana? That's right. Come down to the fairgrounds and you can register to vote, pick up a ballot, and even receive an I Voted sticker. Here's how it works. You can take the bus, ride your bike, or even walk your dog over to the Election Center at the fairgrounds. It takes only five minutes to get your voter registration and even receive your ballot. It's so easy. If you have a hectic schedule, you can check out MissoulaVotes.com for our extended hours after 5 p.m. and also our Saturday schedule. Can't make it before Election Day? No worries. Montana has same-day voter registration available. Come down to the Election Center at the fairgrounds on Tuesday, November 4th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. to fill out some paperwork and get your ballot. Make sure you're in line by 8 p.m. Avoid the lines. Register to vote early. Hey, Thanks, back. Jessica. Okay. Hello, everyone, and I've got some weekend events for you. All right, so at the Children's Museum today from 11 to 11.30, they're having a Taekwondo class. What? So, yeah, learn to kick some blocks and, um, kick some you know, butt. kick some butt and blocks, karate chop stuff, right. with Master Corbin from Championship Training. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, Spectrum Discovery, Discovery Area has a, um, you know, the little kids science center down on Front Street. Today they've got a liquid nitrogen uh, discovery bench and the brain lab is memory and perceptions. So uh, it starts at 11 and it's uh, $3.50 for those that are um, under four. No, four and over and then under three, you're free. Um, so at the YWC of Missoula, they're having YW Talks, um, Community Social Justice Series. Starts at noon. October is Domestic Awareness Month. And so to celebrate, the YWCA is going to host a special screening of Women's Song, which is a uh, documentary film that shares the stories of Native American women, survivors of sexual and domestic violence. Yeah, and if yeah. you miss it, okay. we'll show it on MCAT. Uh, oh, are we? Look for it on MCAT. It will be on about a month or so after. Cool. Yeah, so that's at the YWCA. YWCA today at noon. Um, this weekend is Shred Fest. There's a rail jam going on on Saturday. And so the Kettle House Brewing Company on the south side at 5 p.m. is they're going to have a pint and snowboard movie little festival thing. So you can drink beer and then the Edge of the World is going to put on a snowboarding movie there. Cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That sounds pretty fun. Uh, the Double Tree is having a home resources benefit auction and banquet. It's at 5 p.m. today. And it's a benefit auction for home, home resources, charitable, and educational programs that they have. Um, so there'll be a meal, and they'll have a silent auction um, with the winning, and the auction that they're going to, the things they're going to auction off will be the winning pieces from their spontaneous construction event, as well as a vast array of goods. Um, it, they'll have a live auction, raffles, and a guest speaker. Um, and you can purchase tickets online at the home resource website, homeresource.org or in the home resource store located off of Russell and Wyoming. And, or you can call the store to reserve your tickets, um, 541-8300. Starts at five and the dinner starts at six. So that's today. Um, Tamarack Grief Resource Center is having a Camp to Remember Family Camp. Uh, it's going to be held October 24th to the 26th. This is a fun, safe, supportive environment for our families going through grief to go and spend other time with families that are also going through grief. You know, you can kind of, um, yeah. It's a good opportunity to get together and meet other community members that are going through the same thing as you are. So call 541-8472 for more information. Um, Missoula Children's Theater is having a Bulls, Blues, and Brews at Benefit and Silent Auction. It's at 6 p.m. It's uh, put on by the University of Montana School of Law's Environmental Law Group. Um, and it's this year they're going to raise money to support the Watershed Education Network, which is an organization dedicated to providing river ecology, knowledge, and field science experiences to children um, and young adults throughout western Montana. So they've been going on for 16 years, and this is a benefit to benefit them. Yeah, so this is at 6 p.m. at Missoula Children's Theater. Um, and then for music tonight, there is a traditional Irish music at the Union Club at 6. There's L3O at Ten Spoon Winery at 6.30. Uh, Foxygen, Fox Den's DJ is at the Badlander at 9. Showdown is at the Sunrise Saloon at 9. We Trippy is at the Palace at 9. Zeppo Montana is at the Union Club at 9. And uh, Blitz and Trapper with EDJ is at the Top Hat at 10. Cool. And everything is free except for Blitz and Trapper. They've got a price, but I'm not sure how much it is. 
Um, and then, so that's what's going on for Friday. These are Saturday events. Oh, tomorrow's the last farmer's market. Yeah, it's sad. Oh, yeah. But they're going to have winter market. Yeah. yeah. I think they are, so. Yeah. yeah, they usually do that inside somewhere. Yeah. They're going to have it at the Hive. They do oh, it at nice. the Hive? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So get your leeks and your vegetables your winter, and your, all your great, winter great stuff. So, oh, winter squash. Winter squash. Winter oh, my squash, gosh. Yeah. Everyone's fave. Everyone's fave. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's the last day for the farmer's market. The only one that's going on is by the Red X's. The other two have it, were done for the year. Um, and it's from 8 to 1, and then it's done for the winter. And then we'll have the winter market, and I'll let you guys know when that goes on and where it is. Yeah. Um, Murdoch's Ranch is Home Supply is having Halloween Growloween, which I thought this was really cute. It's at 10 a.m. And it's uh, you and your pet are invited to enjoy Murdoch's Ranch and Home Supply's Halloween Growloween. So it's fun games, uh, product demos, and their pet costume contest and so you can go and dress up your pet maybe like win some prizes or dressing or up your pet is morally wrong to me no it's so fun <laughs> and you I don't even feel have... like they look embarrassed whenever you dress them up some like... of them really like it yeah. some animals some really like being dressed sometimes up. sometimes it's like you got to get them young for them to enjoy it kind of yeah, like, just, like just like bathing a dog <laughs> yeah. and bathing kids <laughs> and bathing kids <laughs> Yeah, so they're going to have a pet costume contest, but it did say that if you don't want to dress your pet up because you're embarrassed for him, you can bring them there, and if they have any cool tricks or, you know, anything sweet, you can earn prizes that way, too. Yeah, so it's just a fun thing for, like, your kid to do, and a little pet, and go see them product demos, and they're going to have a great sales, too. So you cool. need some new things. Tomorrow would be the day to go to Murdoch's Ranch and Home Supply. It's on Broadway Street, like, towards the airport. Um, so Marshall Mountain is having, um, there's an outdoor survival one and two for ladies, and these are for like younger girls, like um, between, there's outdoor, outdoor survival one, and that's for girls K through fifth grade, and outdoor survival two is for girls from sixth to twelfth grade. And so their GSMW and Missoula Parks and Rec are gonna join forces to provide these girls with outdoor, outdoor survival skills. So they're gonna learn how to do um, emergency fire starting, map and compass navigation, animal tracking, shelter building, and Dutch oven cooking. Wow. Yeah, Jeez. I know, right? Yeah. All this stuff, awesome. yeah. So they're gonna learn the basic wilderness first aid and put together a personal survival kit that they can take home. Um, this is for, usually aimed toward um, Girl Scouts, but you don't have to be a Girl Scout to do it. So the program is $8 for Girl Scouts and $23 for non-Girl Scouts. Um, and that includes the annual membership fee. And so you can call Sarah for information and registering, uh, 1-800-736-5243 extension 2306 and what was that number again 1-800-736-5243 yep. extension 2306 thanks Scott. i know yeah so if you guys want to <laughs> sign your kid up for that call that number yep. um, and you can also go to missoula events.net and go to the saturday day page and you'll see the event and it'll give you more information if you want more information on it um, so Green Path Herb School tomorrow at 10 a.m. is having Herbal Therapies for Women workshop. Um, this is where you can learn specific herbs for women's health, including strategies for dealing with common and ongoing issues that arise in a woman's life, like, you know, like hormones and PMS and menopause and crazy stuff like that. Crazy stuff. Yeah, all that women's stuff. Yeah, so it'll include diet, herbal recipes, supplements, herbs, as well as natural remedy, remedies and treatments. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for more like a natural alternative way to deal with your women's issues, you can check this out. Um, so it goes from 10 a.m. to 5, and the cost is $70 at Green Path Herb School. I, I, I did a shoot the other um, a couple months ago, and they were talking about people starting their herbal therapy or like they sell in herbs mm -hmm. and herbal stuff and the class costs ten thousand dollars oh wow I'm like what yeah well wow. crazy <laughs> that's hardcore <laughs> yeah i can't afford but that. that's for people who want to get serious about you know herbal like, like alternative medicine well, yeah. I, I feel like you can like look it up online mm -hmm. like that's what the internet is for like go online and then go out into nature and teach yourself yeah the old uh, phoenix pen, phoenix DeVry university yeah. Online college. <laughs> Boom. Done. Print out. Done. Print out my... The diploma. My, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Okay, yeah. Back back to weekend events. All this right, is uh, one of the many uh, uh, Halloween-themed events going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a... Well, Halloween's next week. And so I guess that they're, they're just going to try to push it a week early. I don't know. Oh, Sweet. yeah. Sweet. Sounds fun. It's not as bad as Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Christmas is all month. So a Halloween Comic Fest is at Muse Comics and Games. This is from 11 a.m. to 7 tomorrow or until supplies last. They're going to have free comic books and candy made just for Halloween, uh, free posters and promotional materials. And it's at 2100 Stevens Avenue, number 107. So that's Muse Comics and Games, and that's tomorrow from 11 to 7. Free comics. Boom. Um, Glacier Ice Rink is having a spooky skate tomorrow from 12 to 3. Uh, activities include skating to spooky music, trick-or-treating, a costume contest, and an on-ice performance of Michael Jackson's Thriller Dance mm. by mm. Missoula Figure Skating Club. Yeah, that'll be cool. interesting. <laughs> yeah. So admission is $6 for adults and $3 for children 18 and under. So sweet. And anyone in costume receives half-price admission, um, and but skate rental is an additional charge. You gotta fork over the money for that. Um, yeah, that sounds cool though. And then so Unity Church is having a paranormal world and metaphysical laws discussion. This will be at noon tomorrow in the downstairs meeting room. Um, it's a free class. Unity Church is located 546 South Avenue. And so the Psychical Society for Investigation Research presents class and discussion on paranormal world and meta metaphysical laws. Metaphysical laws. Yeah, so that'll be kind of cool, kind of in line with the Halloween theme yeah. of this weekend and this week. Guys believe in um, ghosts? Oh, yeah, totally. Energy? Yep. Energy. I'm all mm. about it. I believe in energy. MCAT's haunted by the ghost of Kupla Khan. Whatever. Mm, you guys, totally you don't is. believe in ghosts? I don't know. I I believe in energy, so I mm. believe, like, in... Uh, it can form. Like, like, energy is, like, you know, like, a stone house, there, it's built out of stone. Uh-huh. I hear that energy is kept in the stones. It is, yeah, brick, brick and stone energy. Keeps it's like they hear yeah. everything. Totally. The stones are like have, have googly eyes that go like this, right, left. I, I know everything. I've had too many experiences to like not believe in it. Mm -hmm. So. I kind of believe in UFO. Well, I believe in UFOs. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, the universe is so vast. You know, like how can you it's not? We don't know anything, there. really. Yeah. Yeah. But have what else is happening? <laughs> No. Uh, let me, this let is me an rant. important discussion, let me rant, Scott. Scott. All right, okay, okay. Okay, now back to events. I know, we only have three, seven minutes left in our show. Don't. All right, so at AAA of Missoula, they're having a Harvest Happenings. So that'll be kind of fun. AAA of Missoula is located at 1200 South Reserve Street. At 1 p.m., they're going to have, tomorrow, they're going to have an event, like a family-themed event, but it's old-timey fun. So that'll be kind of cool. We need that. So there's face painting, popcorn, and a winter coat drive to support local families. Um, Old-fashioned photos, and there will be a magician. Sweet. Pumpkin painting, trike races, and more. Uh, the Wild Weenie Food Cart will be on hand with hot dogs, Polish dogs, and chips. And there'll be treats, cider, and other drinks. And there'll be drawings and giveaways for AAA members. And, oh, but for the AAA members, the Glass Doctor will be there filling rock chips at no charge. <laughs> so you can hit two birds with one stone. That sounds cool. <laughs> Take your kids to a fun time and you get your rocks chip filled. <laughs> Okay, uh, at the Montana Natural History Center, they're having a kids' activity, Batty for Bats, at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so you can learn about the 15 species of bats that are in Montana, mm -hmm. and you'll become familiar with the different, you know, kinds of bats and other cool characteristics. Um, you'll be able to see a real live bat skeleton and learn what our Montana bats eat and where they live, and you can make some bat masks for Halloween. So uh, there's a free bat, free bat poster for every kid. It's three dollars or a dollar for members, and adults are free too. So cool. Um, yeah, as I was saying earlier in my segment, uh, there's a shred fest this weekend. So like a rail jam. It's at Karis Park tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, it's put on by the Edge of the World. They're putting. Bring snow in from Glacier, from uh, Gris, awesome. Missoula Glacier Ice Rink. It's free for the public. It's a $25 entry fee for riders. They'll have a DJ set as well as food and alcohol vendors. And um, the, their top prizes are winners and raffle items to the audience if you so choose to enter. So that'll be cool. That'll be fun. It's at Karis Park. It's a pretty good community thing, and they do it every year. Um, Zootown Arts Community Center is having Prom of the Dead tomorrow at 5. It's a Halloween prom put on by the Zach and KVGA. It's a, you can come as your favorite dead prom, the king or queen, or any other costume that you want to. They'll have a photo booth of death crowns for the king and queen and more prom slash creepy things. Uh, there'll also be an after party and awards ceremony for the Halloween Hall, the awards at five. And there'll be music by local DJs from six to eight. And beginning at 8 p.m., the entertainment will be provided by local bands that are going to cover sets of other local bands. <laughs> I think it's super nice. funny. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that that'll be cool. And then all the music that's going on. Uh, Austin Lucas is going to be at the Palace at nine. He's rock. Uh, the Gremlins Dance Party is going to be at Monks at nine. They're a DJ set. Showdown is country, and that's going to be at the Sunrise Saloon at nine. Uh, absolutely, with Chris Moon and Monte Carlo is at the Badlander at nine, and they're also a DJ set. Bottom Feeders are at 9.30 at the Union Club, and they're rock. And uh, Pole Cat with a Little Smokies Trio is at the Top Hat, and it's Bluegrass at 10 p.m. tomorrow. So those are your weekend events. If you want to find out anything else that I've talked about or any more events going on, go to MissoulaEvents.net. You can find everything that's going on for your weekend and the week. Yeah. That's cool. So, Sounds like a lot of good stuff is going on. Bunch of fun things going on this weekend. Yeah, and Halloween's next week, so I'm sure all week they'll have lots of fun Halloween-themed things. No, I'm, and I'm assuming you guys heard about um, Elba Room closing. Oh, yeah, what's going on with that? No, they're hmm. just closing. They're closing huh. the doors. The last day was uh, Wednesday. They were Even though done. they, like, built that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and... it was an investment that just, just didn't pay off. Yeah, they should have just stayed in the double wide. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it's too they bad. needed more elbow room. Elbow. They did. But there but was plenty of, much. there was too much elbow room. Too much elbow too room much in elbow there. Room. They yeah. should have stuck with the double wide. Yeah. 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 So if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can all log on to our Wix page at wakeupmissoula dot wix dot com slash wake up missoula you can go to you can follow us on twitter and you can um, like us on facebook you can check it all out but yeah i'm pretty much done so yeah. i'll let you outro the show josh all right well for wake up missoula i'm josh Minnie. i'm scott ranf and i know i'm back boy we'll see you guys later <laughs> <laughs>